Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Day. Over the last decade, dating apps have become hugely popular, with millions of Australians now meeting each other online. The people using them say the apps are also rife with abuse and sexual harassment, often goes unchecked. Today, an expert in communications on last week's government roundtable on what threat the apps pose and how they can become safer. Hello, I'm Kath Albury. I'm a Professor of Media and Communication at Swinburne University of Technology in Melbourne. Kath, I know you've been talking to a lot of women who've had some major problems with dating apps, and I want to get a sense from you what they've been telling you and what their experiences have been. Can you give me some examples? Yeah, not just women, I should say, but um, non-binary people and men as well, um, particularly from LGBTQ plus communities have talked about mm-hmm. feeling unsafe in different ways when using apps. This isn't always about physical assault, I would say, and and no one in our study talked about being physically assaulted. But people talked about receiving unwanted messages or unwelcome messages on apps. One person told us about going to meet someone on an app and being treated in a very aggressive and racist way. Mm. One of the people we spoke to talked about very pushy conduct on apps. And actually, I should say that's more than one person (laughs) who's experienced that pushy uh, conduct. Yeah. And, and and as one of the gay men we spoke to expressed it really beautifully, I think, he, he was saying, if you don't respect my consent on the app, so, you know, if you, if you don't have the courtesy to ask before you send me a dick pic, you know, how can I trust you to respect my consent when we're in an intimate situation? Mm. Do, they, do they feel unsafe? It's on the app. So presumably they can sort of stop following or talking to that particular person on the app. Yeah, there are different times or places where someone might feel unsafe in relation to using the apps. In some cases, people said apps made them feel safer, I should say, because they could block or delete the conversation. Mm. But there are other spaces where app use begins to feel unsafe because the person that someone is in a chat with is very clearly not who they initially pretended to be or they don't take no for an answer. So one of the women in our study talked about having someone slide into her DMs on Instagram who she had not matched with on Tinder. And this person said, hey, I saw you on Tinder. You're hot. Do you want to hook up? And she was like, well, if I wanted to hook up, Mm. I would have matched with you. So these are the kinds of things that make people feel like they're unsafe. Or if someone says to them in a chat, oh, I saw you work at such and such, you know, that must be a long commute. So if someone tries to drop elements into the chat that makes it seem like they might be checking them out or watching them, that's where people feel unsafe on apps. Mm, So it's instances of sort of threatening language and even sending unsolicited sexual images. I note that the Australian Institute of Criminology, they were just looking at women, I think, but they found three in four women have actually been a victim of that sort of harassment in the past five years. And there's so many people, Kath, isn't there, using these dating apps now in Australia. Something like three million Australians use these apps. So it's a massive amount of people. Yeah, I would look to put that in perspective, and this isn't happy perspective, but Mm. the rates of intimate partner violence and domestic violence are unacceptably high in Australia. Mm. And so statistically, the patterns we see on apps mirror the patterns we see in other parts of the world. And and what it is is perpetrators using the technologies of the apps in particular ways to in, in order to harass or, or to be violent. And as you say, on the app, you can sort of block people. What about when dates are set up? Is there a problem with abuse or harassment going on in physical dates? Yeah, look... 
Yes, it, it certainly does occur. And, and one of the things that um, some people are concerned about is that elements of dating app culture have been used as excuses by perpetrators in these cases to say, well, you must have wanted it. You were on the app. You were asking for it. You were on the app. So being on the app and being willing to meet someone because you've had a chat and they're funny and, you know, they seem like someone you're attracted to is used as the new, oh, you were wearing a short dress. You must have been asking for it mm. by the perpetrators. Is it common that there would be repeat offenders on these apps, that they will continually harass others? Look, what we know about repeat offenders, unfortunately, is they target spaces and people where they see opportunity and they see a site of vulnerability. Right now, there are elements of app culture that make it easy for perpetrators to come back. So yes, w where people have a pattern of violent behaviour, that's where it's particularly important for apps to be really responsive to reports um, and for them to be clear that they're not going to victim blame and they're not going to fob people off with an auto reply. They're actually going to help a survivor of violence um, get support and get referrals and, and be in a position where if what they want is a law enforcement response, they have access to that. Meeting between the government and the companies that run dating apps has been described as an important first step in addressing the rate of sexual violence both online and in the real world. The roundtable discussion was prompted by a recent report which revealed alarming rates... Mm, of Kath, let's talk about what the federal government is doing because it's acknowledged that this is a real problem, that people are being harassed on these apps, that their safety can't be guaranteed. So what is the communications minister proposing is done? Uh, look, the forums haven't uh, made recommendations. That, that Dating app, Apps Summit has not made a recommendation. What it was was a listening exercise. There's no overnight solution or quick fix but there are a number of actions coming out of today. So some people were asking for dating apps to implement a process where anyone starting up a profile on the app needs to put forward 100 points of ID. Um, other people were talking about different kinds of collaboration with law enforcement. So the consideration of the issues today can be taken forward, particularly looking at criminal justice responses to technology, facilitated violence. and There were a range of proposals. It was primarily in relation to criminology, law enforcement and uh, supporting survivors. There was less discussion of prevention in that forum, which doesn't mm. mean there won't be those discussions in the future. Mm, so what do you think should be done? Uh, look, I am not enthusiastic about the 100 points of ID requirement because mm. of the diversity of people on the app. Being required to give 100 points of ID, basically on an app like Grindr, for example, would create a database of men who have sex with men in Australia. We know from the recent Optus leak how dangerous this can be. And I, I am really concerned by... Um, a belief that, you know, people being required to give more data to a, a private for-profit company makes them safer. It, it doesn't necessarily. Mm, so you don't think that will protect users. What are people that use the apps telling you? What would make them feel safer when they're actually using those apps and then when they're actually going on a physical date? Yeah, so some people, people with disabilities, people who are otherwise marginalised, so um, people who come from migrant communities. In my study and other studies, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have reported this, that they are especially targeted on apps because of their perceived difference and they're both fetishised but also um, subjected to hate speech on the apps. And this is something that I think it's very difficult for law enforcement to deal with after the fact. What people really wanted from apps was a move away from the kind of scaled up 
automated reply process. Many people said to us that they felt like when they did report, yes, they could block, but they were concerned then that report went into a void and they got an automated response, you know, the equivalent of your call is important to us. They didn't know what would happen next. Most of the big dating apps in Australia don't have a team on the ground. And I think this is the kind of thing that would make it a lot safer and um, more comfortable for app users because if they felt like there was a team who could directly address their experience on the ground in Australia, they would feel a lot safer. Mm, well, we know discussions have begun with the stakeholders and the federal government, but Kath, do you think these sort of apps can actually survive if people don't feel safe using them? I mean, why would you use them if you don't feel safe? Or should we just go back to the traditional way of dating? Uh, is that safe even? Look, I don't know what the traditional way of dating mm-hmm. is. I mean, you know, I'm 55. Is is it, um, you know, getting uh, your sister's ID and going to the pub and getting blind drunk mm. and hooking up with someone that you have to ask their last name in the morning? because that certainly used to happen back in the day. I think sometimes we're a bit romantic about what old-fashioned dating was. Mm. Uh, I think dating apps are a really important tool for many people. It allows, for example, a single parent whose kids are in bed and they can't, you know, go out to meet people. It allows them to chat and flirt and connect It allows a same-sex attracted person or a person who thinks they might be queer, who, you know, isn't ready to come out or to go out to explore their sexuality and build community. It's a bit like, you know, the idea of going to a bar now. It's not a free-for-all. Many bars are taking their responsibility really seriously in relation to the safety of their patrons. You know, you go to the bathroom And there's a sign saying, you know, is something up with your date? Do you feel unsafe? Go to the bar and ask for Angel. We'll make sure that, you know, security talks to you and you get a safe ride home. These are the kinds of responses that people want in apps as well. Kath Albury is a professor of media and communications at Swinburne University. Tinder has launched a new dating safety guide as well as an in-app safety campaign. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sydney Peed and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.